Well, hello everyone, Jerry Dearman here and welcome to the Solid Life's weekly message and we have a good one for you today. But before we get to that, let me just tell you, we're getting a lot of testimonies from these Jesus Gifts groups. We have asked people to get into groups and to get the free lessons for Jesus Gifts, six lessons, and it's on the BFAM app or at bfammovements.com. And we're asking people, in fact, I believe by the word of the Lord, for people to gather in homes, gather in workplaces, gather in dorm rooms, at schools, wherever, get a group of believers together and walk through the six lessons that help us to understand that every person in the body of Christ is either an apostle, a prophet, an evangelist, a pastor, or a teacher, not just a few elites, but the grace has been given to all of us. And so I want us to study about that. But I believe the Holy Spirit is calling widespread in the body of Christ right now in preparation for things that are ahead. Jesus is coming soon to gather into groups and begin walking through the word of God, revisiting how Jesus wants his church to function. And we're getting testimonies back like crazy from these various groups, many of which have become house churches. And by the way, if you're interested in becoming a house church and part of the Solid Lives House Church Network, then you can go to solidlives.com and you can click on house churches and you can fill out a form and go through the process of becoming part of our network. We would love that. We would love that. God is expanding the network. God is planting many house churches and maybe you'll be one of those who, along with some other people, maybe you're the leader or maybe somebody else is the leader and you'll be partnering with them. But God is opening up house churches everywhere. And I believe that this is a, a move of God that's going to continue to become prevalent. But it's right now. So get the Jesus Gifts uh, lessons from bfam.com, uh, excuse me, bfammovements.com or the bfam app. And then don't forget, the BFAM conference is coming up September the 15th through the 17th, Thursday evening, all day and evening Friday, and then Saturday morning till about 1 p.m. Okay, now for this message, I asked my wife to speak, Kimberly, at The Rock in Anaheim. And man, she brought a timely and precious word from the Lord out of the book of Proverbs. And I believe you're going to hear from God. She's so fun and funny. But let me tell you, she is from the heart. And I believe the Spirit of God is all over this message. So open your heart to receive, grab your Bible, and let's hear this message from Kimberly Dearman. And Lord, we do thank you for the Spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit that knows us and that desires to guide us. So we open up our hearts, we open up our ears to hear, our eyes to see, and to receive what you're saying to us individually and to us as your church. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Before I read the scripture, I want to tell you, context really makes a difference. Context really makes a difference. For example, if I'm next to somebody by a pool and they say, hey, are you a good swimmer? I'd say, I'm a pretty good swimmer. I could do a couple laps or more on that pool. No big deal, right? Yeah, I'm a pretty good swimmer. But if we were out in the middle of the ocean and the, the boat was sinking and they said to me, are you a good swimmer? I'd be going, Santa Barbara, bendita que me va a pasar. No. In other words, I'd be like, oh boy. That's a whole other concept of good swimming, right? Right. So context makes a difference. Well, I want to read to you a passage that may be common to you because you've learned it, memorized it, you've grown up with knowing this verse, but I want to explain to you the context in which God began to speak this verse to me. So I want you to go to Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3. Let's look at verses 5 and 6, and let's, let's read on the screens. We're going to read from the New King James Version, but let's read it together. Ready? Let's go. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. How many of you have read that scripture or even have memorized it? Okay. That is most of you, correct? It is, again, it's one of our Christian. What if I wanted that bottle? <laughs> what if it was offering me comfort? Don't you love getting all the attention? You're like, oh my gosh, please stop right now. <laughs> so appreciate our wonderful team. Come on, would you clap it up? Yes, they're amazing. 
Thank you, guys. We have so many people that serve so hard and work so diligent with these precious hearts, so thank you. He will never come see me again, though. Uh, again, a, a very well-known scripture, but the Lord a few years ago began to talk to me as I was reading this scripture, and he said, I want you to trust me like Noah trusted me. I want you to trust me like Noah trusted me. And the Lord began to share with me, there are days coming where you're going to need to trust me like Noah trusted me. Now, you may be thinking, who's Noah? Well, you can look back in Genesis chapter 6 and chapter 7. But Noah was a righteous man. The Bible says, called him a righteous man in his generation. And God came to him and said, Noah, I need you to do something that you've never seen done because something is happening that has never happened. And he said, Noah, I need you to build an ark. And Noah's like, okay, so I'm going to demonize it right now, okay? Noah's like, what's an ark? He said, God says, it's a really, really big boat. And why am I going to build an ark? Well, because there's going to be a flood on the earth. What's a flood? Well, it's when a lot of rain keeps coming from the sky. What's rain? Because you have to remember, back in that time, rain wasn't, had not happened. The water was earth, uh, the earth was watered from inside of the earth not from the sky. And so God's coming to Noah, literally saying, I'm going to lead you to, to build something that you've never built and that no one has ever built for something that is coming that no one has ever seen. And God's saying, that's the context in which I'm telling you to trust me with all of your heart, like Noah did. And so it, it got my attention because I've known this verse for a lot of years. But I knew God, he was not trying to build fear. As a matter of fact, there was no fear attached to it. Like, oh, no, everybody run to the hills. No, I actually felt like, Lord, how beautiful you are, that you are speaking because you want us to be prepared for anything that could be coming. Isn't that wonderful? He wants his people prepared. And for Noah, it was building an ark when the flood came. Noah and his household and a lot of animals. Can you imagine the smell? I don't care how many bath and body sprays I would have. But... Nevertheless, they were safe, right? They were inside of the ark. Actually, God shut the window, the door of the ark, and they were safe in there as the flooding came. Well, again, when God began to minister that to me, there was no fear attached, but there was an urgency to wake up and not even allow myself, as someone who's grown up in church and is a pastor, just to become casual about these things. So I want to focus on, on this this morning because I believe that God is trying to get his people ready for whatever may be coming down the road. It's not a fear tactic. You sh we don't need to be afraid because God is with us, but we do need to be prepared. We do need to be prepared. So trust in the Lord with all your heart. What does that mean? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Trust means put all your confidence. Put all your confidence in the Lord. He is the one and only who knows the end from the beginning and who will never mislead you or deceive you. He is the only one who knows every detail about everything. Have you noticed there are a lot of experts today with opinions? Have you noticed all these experts really contradict each other? It depends who you're listening to. Somebody's wrong, <laughs> right? Perhaps all of them are wrong. But here's the deal. Even experts can only uh, share knowledge based on their past experience, and really a lot of it are guesses. This is our best guess, Right? God did not intend for us as his sons and daughters to live guessing or to live by whatever is happening in the news and by whatever the popular topic is and the popular voices. No, 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 God said, but I'm going to need you to trust me, put all of your confidence in me because I know every detail. God is the one who knows everything and he never misleads. Have you ever been misled? You really think somebody's leading you the right way, and it's like, oh, man, that was not the right way. God will never look back. You'll never be able to look back and say God misled them. Sometimes we mishear, but God does not mislead. So to put all our confidence in him, it says with all of your heart, all. God does not exaggerate. Any of you exaggerate? I, I don't anymore. I used to because if I ever said to Jerry, you never, then we go through the talk, never, I've never, I'm like, right, or if I say you always, always, I never do that. 
You always do. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> no marriage counseling needed right now. <laughs> I'm just kidding. We tend to exaggerate. When God says all, none, every, he's not exaggerating. He's not man that exaggerates. It makes it sound better than it really is. He says, no, trust me with all your heart, which means leave no room in your heart to trust anything else or anyone else above me. Leave no room for doubt or fear. Fill your entire heart, the center of who you are, with trusting God. With trusting God. Let every part of you trust him. Now he goes on to say, the Bible, uh, Proverbs 3, 5 goes on to say, trust and not lean on your own understanding. Your own understanding. Human understanding is subject to error. Error. What could seem right, you find out was actually wrong. Right? Sometimes you think the right decision, you later find out that was the wrong decision. Sometimes you hear that we thought that was the right information and we found out that was the wrong information. Sometimes our own opinions are formed based on faulty beliefs. And so God's saying, don't depend on yourself or your own understanding. Because as long as you rely on yourself, then you will lead yourself. No, he says, I need you to trust me with all of your heart. And don't make yourself, your own opinions, your own thoughts, your own ways, the crutch. I've learned some things that when I come before the Lord or his word, I, I want to keep a, hum, a heart that is humble. It says, Lord, if I'm missing something, please show me. I don't ever want to get to the point that I'm arrogant, that I just think I know because I know. There are some things, yes, get settled because God's word says it. Right? Those are the things that we need to know. What did God say? But our own just opinions, it's amazing to me how many people argue based on their own opinions. And we think everybody else is wrong and we're right. Has it ever crossed our minds maybe we are the ones that are wrong? Because that crosses my mind sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> right? Have you ever believed something and you thought you were so right and then you did find out? Yeah. So, again, let's bring up Jerry. <laughs> I mean, there have been some things I've been so convinced. Like, I am like, nope, nope, that was it. That was, I was right. That's it. Right. And then I come to find out I was wrong. That's when you just go, sorry, I was wrong. <laughs> you're right. You're right. You don't say you are right. You say you're right. You're right. But it delights him for me to speak clearly. Say it again. <laughs> Say it slowly. You are right. Right? There's something we don't want to be wrong. We don't want to be wrong. And I'm not talking about being double-minded. I'm not talking about not being confident in the Lord. His word is settled. I'm talking about having this position that we just think the way we think is right. Let's line it up to the word. Because listen, if the way we think is different from the word, then we're wrong. Because he's always right. And this is part of living the Christian life. It is. It's part of being a Christian and a follower of Christ. We recognize if I think differently from the Bible, I'm wrong, not him. But it takes trust in the Lord. It takes trust in the Lord to be able to do that. So he says, trust me with everything. Leave no room to trust anything else or no one else. Leave no room for doubt. Trust me with all your heart and don't depend or rely on your own understanding and your own knowledge. And then verse 6, in all your ways, acknowledge him. So we trust, we don't depend on ourselves, we acknowledge him. Now this word acknowledge doesn't mean say, hey, God, I see, you're there. God, today, you know. No, no, no. Do you know what this word acknowledge means? It's actually the word yada talks about intimacy how beautiful that a perfect and holy God invites his people invites people who have issues and I want to remind you you do have them dear and I have them isn't it beautiful that God with all of our imperfections all of our stuff he says in all of your ways be intimate with me that's amazing that's amazing God doesn't say hey get it together and then we'll walk together closely. Uh-uh. He says, in all your ways, the messed up ones, 
the ones that have been like you're going around the mountain over and over and over and over again. You're going around the same thing. He goes, in those ways, come on, know me intimately. I, I don't know if that hits you, but I just, I get overwhelmed by the fact that this perfect and holy God invites me to such close union with him as an imperfect human being. See, we think it's our sin that just keep, keeps us away. Unconfessed sin will break the fellowship. But there's forgiveness. And, and, and you know, I, I see some people and I hear people say, I, I, I'm going to get free from this addiction. And, and when I do, man, I'm just going to jump in there with God. It never works. It doesn't work. And God doesn't want you to do that. You waste years. People have wasted their lifetime trying to get themselves fixed. No, God says, hey, that way right there, oh, yeah, that's not going to lead to life. Come over here. Would you trust me with all your heart? Don't lean on what you've already experienced or known. Know me intimately. Know me intimately. In that way, know me intimately. In the bondage that you may be dealing with, come on, come really close. Know me intimately. Because I'll lead you for freedom from that bondage. You know those repeated cycles of families? Any of you see those cycles from one generation to the next? God says, mm -mm, don't repeat that cycle. Come right, right close. Come on. Know me intimately in this way of your life. And I'll show you what to do. That's what he said. He said, it, it, you acknowledge him in all, of his way, in all of our ways. He says, I'll direct your paths. I'll direct your paths. And again, who's directing our paths? The one who knows everything about everything, who loves us unconditionally, who's committed to us, who's already proven his love to us. He's the one saying, don't follow your own way. It will not lead you where you think it's going to lead you to. Trust me. Know me intimately and let me lead you. And let me lead you. You know, if you struggle with trusting God, well, let me say it this way. If you struggle obeying God, I've recognized, yeah, that there's a flesh issue, but oftentimes disobedience or not following God has everything to do with the fact that we don't trust him, which is everything to do with the fact that we don't know him in those areas. It's hard to follow someone that tells you things that are opposite to what you think if you don't know them well. If Jerry told me today, honey, God's called me to call us to Timbuktu, you know where that is? That means I don't either. That means this is not good, right? If he would say, God's called us there and, and we need to go there, you know what? I would go. You know why? Because I trust him. Why? Because I know him intimately. I've lived with him for 35 years. I've seen how he processes life. I've seen how he deals with hard situations. I've seen when the giants have come against him. I've seen those behind-the-scenes things, the behind-the-scenes way he lives, and it has built a trust in me. So if he says God's calling us to do something, then I'm like, all right. Well, here we go, Timbuktu. Hope you speak Spanish because <laughs> I'm a coming, right? <laughs> right? But what if I didn't trust him? What if I didn't trust him? It would be so much harder to follow him to something unknown. I'd just say, I love you, dear. I'm sure going to miss you, but write me FaceTime. We can FaceTime all the time. <laughs> That's not true. It's easier to follow when you trust, but you can't trust if you don't know. If you don't know him intimately, you're not going to be able to trust him enough to follow him, especially in these days. And so you may be thinking, oh, man, I do deal with trust. I do have trust issues with God. Okay, well, don't be discouraged because this is part of the good news. He's saying, well, then know me intimately. Know me intimately to the point that you trust me, and then you're going to be able to follow me because I'm going to lead you. Isn't it wonderful? He doesn't look at us in, in, in with the judgment of you don't trust me. Get over it. You're on your own. No, he says, I know you don't trust me, so I need you to know me. I want you to know me. I want you to know me intimately so that you can trust me and you can follow me. Oh, listen, it's those who know their God that do the great exploits. We will not do what God is telling us to do without knowing him. We will be limited on our ability to follow through. But the more we know him, the more we trust him, the more we yield ourselves to him, the more we follow him. 
It's a beautiful, a beautiful thing. The more you know him, you'll have greater trust in his character and his love and his power for you. So it's in this place of intimacy that the Lord begins to lead. He begins to show you what to do. Now, if you've made Jesus Lord of your life, according to John 10, 27, you can hear the voice of God. And I know, again, many of you know this, but listen, you have the ability to hear God speak to you and direct you out of any and in every circumstance. John 10, 27, Jesus said, my sheep, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. Do you see that closeness? My sheep hear my voice. I've never heard God's voice audibly, but I have learned to recognize his voice and I'm so thankful because if I hadn't, I don't know what my life would be like. I don't know where I would be. Thank God that he speaks and we have the ability to hear him. God speaks through his word. This word is precious. This is not some devotional book that you have to do so that you can check off the list so that God likes you more. Think about it. The Lord showed me years ago that he wanted my time with him to shift from a duty to a delight. It's not just a duty while I'm a Christian, so I need to read my Bible. What a privilege that we get to hear God. But if we don't believe he's actually going to speak to us, if we don't trust that he'll actually has truth and he'll speak to us through his word, then we read every other book but the Bible. We look to every other reason, every other source, when here is the source of all life right here. So he will speak to you through his word. In Psalm 1830, it says this, as for God, his way is perfect. Just think about that. <laughs> as for God, his way is perfect. In other words, it is right. It is complete. There's no error in his way. It doesn't matter who's saying differently. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is proven. In other words, it's been purified. It's tested. It is true. It is unchangeable. He is a shield to all who trust him. God will speak to you through his word. It's beautiful to be able to read certain passages and you begin to find out, oh, God, you are speaking to me through your word. Psalm 23, about seven years ago, six years ago, became life to me. And I grew up. It was the first Bible passage that I memorized. And I memorized it in Spanish because that's my first language. Jehová es mi pastor, nada me faltará. And I've known it since I was a little girl. But six years ago, I didn't realize that my soul needed to be restored until I'm just reading Psalm 23. And he begins through his precious word to minister to me about restoring my soul. It wasn't just a passage like, isn't Psalm 23 cool? No, it was God leading me in his path of healing and wholeness for my heart that had experienced some pain, real pain. How precious his word. But it took me opening his word to read it. And not just to read it to get through it, but to say, Lord, speak to me through your precious word. And then I discovered Jesus as my shepherd in a way I've never known him in my 50 some years. <laughs> Jerry's almost 58. <laughs> Did I tell you I enjoy having the mic? <laughs> get you back. <laughs> <laughs> He's almost 58 and I'm almost 56, and we're just getting started. That psalm became life to me, life to me. It brought healing from things that I didn't even recognize had been wearing in my heart. Psalm 23, his word, his word, his word taught me to forgive my dad, who'd been an alcoholic my whole life. And if any of you have addicted parents, you understand what that life looks like. And at 21, the Lord speaks to me as I'm just reading through. Actually, I was getting ready to teach junior hires on forgiveness. But as I'm reading his word, God speaks to me through his word and says, you forgive. It's easier to teach others. No, you forgive. Having no idea 
that my obedience to trust him to forgive, even though my heart ached, even though my heart was angry, to trust him enough to just forgive would lead me into a place of freedom. See, God's commandments, his word, it's not burdensome. It's to bring life. And some people fight so hard to keep unforgiveness and to be angry, but they don't realize it doesn't hurt that person nearly as it steals your own life. So thankful to find out that by the stripes of Jesus, I was healed. This is where I got into great conversations with Jerry when we had just met. I was dealing with some physical stuff, and he, he ministered to me just from the word on what Jesus said. And I was like, oh, yeah, for everything, not just certain diseases, not just certain things. Like, he heals all. So I was like, all right. Well, thank you, Lord. I received healing and never had any issues again. Welcome to meeting Jerry Dearman, right? That was my, one of my first encounters. But he just took me to the word. See, his word is life. And the enemy will cause us just to spin and spin and spin and try to figure it out and lean on our own understanding and figure out what we did, what we used to do, what this person said, what that person said. And God's saying, but I've already written to you and I want to speak to you with what I've written. I want to show you the path of life. But God doesn't just only speak through his word. He speaks to you by the Holy Spirit. John chapter 16 is one of my favorite passages in the Bible. John chapter 16. Jesus is getting his disciples ready for his departure. He knows he's about to die. And he's telling them, hey, guys, I'm getting ready to leave. And they were like, we just walked away from everything. We've been following you. What do you mean you're leaving? And Jesus says this incredible thing in verse 7. He says, it is to your advantage that I go away. It's to your advantage. Jesus was literally saying to them, it's been good with me being here, but when I leave, you're going to do better than if I just stayed here with you. See, we live under the advantage season because Christ is not here with us. Now, someday we'll all be together, and that's a whole other season, right? But right now, we think uh, we have the disadvantage. No, we are advantaged people because Jesus said, when I leave, you have the advantage because when I go, Father will send you the helper called the Holy Spirit. The same one that filled him will fill you. And now you'll have this private tutor that will walk with you to guide you, to help you in every situation of life, to prepare you for the future. Jesus was saying, well, I'm here. I can only be in one place at one time. So that means he'd be with me. He couldn't be with you. But instead he said, no, when I depart, the one that led me, will now lead you. We get to hear the very voice of God. Again, I'm not talking about audibly, but in here, he begins to lead us by his Holy Spirit. He begins to speak things that you're not just going to find in the Bible. Now, God will never contradict himself. So you want safety? The more you know this, you'll be able to recognize the voice of God and the voice of the enemy. God will not contradict himself. But there are things that the Holy Spirit needs to lead you and that you're not just going to find a passage for. You know, in 1999, there would no, be no passage that we would look at and say, Dearmans, leave the valley and go to Orange County and start a church. There's no passage that says that. We just knew the Holy Spirit began to put in his heart, oh my goodness, we're called to start a church. We knew two things, start a church in Orange County. So we drove to Newport Beach. We said, surely... Sure. No, I'm not kidding. It's not a joke. We drove to Newport Beach. We could tell you the, the Baja Fresh we ate at. And when our kids were little, and we're like, let's pray, guys. God's calling us to Orange County. People in Newport Beach need Jesus desperately. <laughs> send us, Lord. Send us, Lord, right? And we hear nothing. Like, there was no sense. Like, yeah, this is it. So we did it a few months later again, just in case. We had, we'd missed it. Like, Lord, here we are. <laughs> Nothing. It's like Laguna Beach. 
Dana Point, San Clemente, Long Beach. Can I please see the ocean? Can you call me to where there's ocean? I've been in the valley for how many years? It's time for the ocean. <laughs> Nothing. If we would have leaned on our own understanding, I'd be looking at the ocean today. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right, people. You're worth it. You are so worth it. <laughs> No, no, listen, if we were to try to go after our own plan, right? But it's like, Lord, you said Orange County, we'll go wherever. No, nope, not Newport. And then we come to Anaheim. Yup, Anaheim. All right, here we go. I think, what would our lives look like if we had said no 22 years ago? Because it wasn't easy. We left our friends, we left... We sold our little townhouse, and we started over in our 30s, over again. It wasn't the only time, but over again. But we knew, wow, we get, to, we get to do this. It wasn't the scripture. It was the Holy Spirit's beginning to whisper. And again, we pondered on it. We prayed about it. We brought the Lord in to lead us. We became intimate with him and what his heart was for where we were to go until we knew, ah, oh, that's Anaheim. He wants us here. He wants us to come and take over a church that has debt and is pretty run down and start all over. Let's do this. And we were excited. We were excited. What would life look like if my grandmother at 19 had not followed the Holy Spirit to go to Columbia? to go as a missionary at 19 years old. Listen, she left everything. We left the valley. She left this country as a 19-year-old girl to go to Bolivia and then to go to Colombia to be a missionary. Thousands of people affected by her one decision. I wouldn't even be here if she hadn't said yes. See, our decisions don't just affect us. They affect our generations. I wouldn't be standing here if it hadn't been for my grandmother. Imagine Jerry without me. <laughs> People, he had to bring me all the way from Colombia <laughs> to help this gringo man. <laughs> no, but think about it. How beautiful it was. What if I hadn't broken off the relationship right before I got to know Jerry? What if he hadn't broken off the relationship right before he got to know me? Because if I'd have gone with my own understanding, I'd have married the guy I wanted to marry. Walking away from your own plans and your own things is not easy, but oh, is it worth it? You think it's hard following Christ? It is so much harder not following him. <laughs> I'm so glad for the Holy Spirit and praying people, <laughs> praying grandparents and mom, that would lead and say, it's not the right one. It's not the one. You could, I could feel the tension in my heart. You know, when, you know when you know God's speaking? When you don't talk to him about it. When you avoid conversations with the Lord about certain areas in your life. It's because you already know what he's saying. The Holy Spirit comes to guide you, to help you how to parent, to help you how to manage and steward your finances he'll lead you may yes maybe he'll lead you to books he'll lead you to classes he'll lead you to people but now you're not just running like like a person without a god trying to get help from anywhere now you've got this intimate walk with jesus with with the lord and he's saying do this now now do this i've seen people struggle their entire marriages marriage lives and they can go from counseling to counseling and from book to book but there's something so powerful about inviting Jesus into a messy marriage and saying, Jesus, this is not good. You already know that. But we want to know you in this messy marriage, and we invite you. We want to walk so intimately with you. And we ask you to lead us. And what does he do? He begins to lead you. He begins to deal with your own heart. You're like, lead, deal with him. He's like, let me deal with you. And then he's dealing with them, saying, let me deal with them. And he begins to lead. We have the advantage. The love of God is so 
You can't even measure it. When Jesus said he will not leave you orphans, he'll send the Holy Spirit. It's like he's saying, guys, <laughs> I know life has its challenges. I know you've come from hard places. I know people have let you down. I know it's hard to trust. But he's saying, but would you walk with me and let me show you who I am so that I can lead you to places of freedom and of life? How beautiful he is. How marvelous this God that invites us to walk with him so close, so close. You and I have the advantage. And the Lord is saying to us today, there are some things coming that we've never seen. Again, there is no fear attached to it. Because he was saying, I want to prepare you. I want to prepare you as a church. But I want to prepare you as individuals. I want to show you what your ark looks like. So when the floods come and whatever else may come down, you're not swimming trying to get your breath, but you're in a place of you've been prepared and you're in a place of safety and you're able to help others. If you lean on your own understanding, you'll keep doing what you've been doing. But when you begin to lean into God, you'll begin to hear him saying, boy, he's saying He's giving us some instruction here. You know why sometimes the, the voice of God is hard to recognize? Because he doesn't come with you in Pastor Carl's voice. <laughs> Except to Pastor Carl. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? He doesn't come with this, this is God. No, he, he sounds like you. And so oftentimes we miss what he's saying because we think that's just us. I encourage you. To take time, and this is where, again, taking time to read his word, to come before him still. Put that phone away. Put that phone away. Turn that thing off, airplane mode, silence. And just come and say, Lord, I yield myself to you. Any area that you want to talk to me about, I'm giving to you. I'm going to stop looking for everywhere else. I'm going to come to you, and then you lead me if I'm supposed to go to a marriage coach. You lead me if I'm going to read a book. But you, you lead me. This is what the Lord is wanting. He doesn't want us cut off guard. He doesn't want us unprepared. He's saying, let me lead you now. Let me show you how to build this ark. And let me tell you, there's something about households. Because this ark is not just for you. More than ever, we, are, we should be praying, Lord, for our households. I don't care if your kids are serving Jesus or not right now. I mean, I do care. But that's not the determinant. The det what determines. Notice Noah was righteous in the eyes of God. It didn't say his children were. But for the sake of Noah, for the sake of Rahab, God spared and protected families. We need to be contending for our households and those that God gives us the community with. These are arcs of people. Arcs of precious people. And there are many arcs. I'm so glad he's not saying there's one arc and y'all better hop on that one. No, no. He's going to lead you. He's going to lead you, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to require you to cut off so much of the noise and be still. And acknowledge him in all of your ways. Know him intimately and in what he's saying to you. And he will lead you. And like Noah, you will be prepared. Your household will be prepared. These are the greatest days for people who walk with Jesus. These are going to be the hardest days for people who don't. We have a Savior, He's real. He's not a Sunday morning tradition. He is a real God who's saying, let me walk with you. I got you. I'll lead you. Would you close your eyes? I pray over you in Jesus' name that you would trust in the Lord completely and not rely on your own knowledge or opinions. 
that with all of your heart you would rely on him to guide you because he will lead you in every decision. I pray that you become so intimate with God, so close under the shadow of his wing that whatever you do, he's leading you, he's guiding you, he's instructing you, and he's causing you to be prepared. Lord, thank you for your precious word. It's been proven. At the end of our lifetime, we will find out that what you said was true. And everything that disagreed with you was a lie. We recognize that. And even when things don't make sense, we're going to keep digging into your precious word and walking with you. Jesus, you are right. You are so right. You would not leave us orphans on our own, but you would send the Holy Spirit who would fill us and guide us and show us things to come. So thank you, Holy Spirit, for walking with us and guiding us on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Thank you that there's no area of our lives that you don't desire to lead us. So we yield ourselves to you. And Lord, thank you for the privilege of inviting us to know you so deeply. What a wonderful invitation that a holy God invites us to be that close. It's a privilege to walk with you. It's a privilege to know you. And we want everyone to know you. We want to extend that privilege to every person so that they may know you, so that you can lead them. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for your deep character. You're not a man that you should lie. Thank you for your love for us. You have proven your love for us. And thank you for your power that works on our behalf. We trust you. We trust you because we know you. And we will follow you. And thank you, Lord, that the days of our lives will become richer, more meaningful, more powerful, more impactful than ever before, simply because we know you more, and we walk with you more, and we follow you more. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, I don't know what exactly God is speaking to you through this message, but I know that he's speaking. And he's saying, trust me. Trust me with all your heart. Let me guide you. Let me direct your paths. I will help you. I will heal you. I will restore you. I will deliver you. I will provide for you. I will resolve the issues that you're facing. But you need to trust me. You need to lean into me. Listen to me. Let me speak to you through my word and by my spirit. And I know that this is what the Lord is saying to all of us, regardless of what the specific scenario is that we're facing, God is speaking. And I want to pray right now. I want to pray about this right now. And then I want to bring one other thought to you. But before we get to that, let's pray. Whatever it is, maybe put your hands out before the Lord and say, Lord, I'm bringing this issue to you. I'm responding to this message today. So Father, in the name of Jesus, I am agreeing with this precious child of yours who is hearing your voice speak today. And I pray that you would strengthen them by your spirit to yield to you, to yearn for you, to call upon you, 
cry out and to hear and discern your instructions so that they may be delivered, healed, strengthened, provided for, protected, cared for, and restored. In the name of Jesus, Lord, may this be the beginning of a new season of walking with you and hearing from you and following your voice and seeing the supernatural happen as a result. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. And Father, I also pray for this sense that I've had that I've been talking about now for over two years, that you are calling believers to gather in homes, in house churches of sorts, and to fellowship around the word of God and to pray for one another and to care for one another. Lord, I pray that you would help those who are watching today, that you would tug on the hearts, that you would let them know exactly what you'd like them to do in the name of Jesus. Lord, prepare us for things that are coming because we are your sheep, we are your people, and you love us, and you want to give us the instructions we need so that we'll be in the right place at the right time, and not only to protect us and our families, but also to be in the right place so that others around us who maybe don't know you yet can also come and be protected. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and are safe. Lord, may strong towers of the name of Jesus be planted all over that people can run to and be safe. And I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. And let me just say, if you feel a tug from the Lord to launch a Jesus Gifts group, then you can go to bfam.com and get the lessons there or bfam, excuse me, bfammovements.com or the bfam app. Get the lessons there. And also consider becoming a house church and becoming part of the Solid Lives House Church Network. And you can get to that jot form to fill out at solidlives.com. Well, God bless you. Thank you for being with us today. And we look forward to next week.